Hi guys, welcome you all to my channel Explore Edu TT. So, the new topic in network analysis is the two port network. We will be basically dividing this particular topic into two videos. The first video is the one which you're watching right now and the next video will be coming out very soon. So the first part of video will be consisting of the introduction part and the driving point function and the transfer function. And the second part of the video will be consisting of the two port network parameters. So before learning the two port network parameters, you should be well defined and you should understand about some concepts like the driving point function and the transfer function. Hence in this particular video, I'll be taking the prerequisite you can say for learning the two port networks like the Z parameters, Y parameters, the H parameters, the ABCD parameters and so on and so forth. So let's begin with this particular video. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram. The link is given down in the description box. Also, the complete notes that you're able to find on the particular screen right now is present down in the description box also for free. So please go and download the PDF from the notes and you can keep it with yourself for your reference. So let's begin. So please make a note of this particular video very well. Please download the notes from the description box because it's a very important concept as I told you. Before we learn the two port network in the next video, you should know these terminologies and the parameters that I'm going to talk in this particular video. So please listen to it very well and share it as much as you can. So talking first about the introduction. A network function gives the relation between the current and the voltages at different parts of the network. It is broadly classified as driving point and transfer function. So if you look at this particular network which is given over here, this box basically indicates a particular network which can have resistors, capacitors, inductors, so on and so forth. At one part of the port, we have V1 and I1. And at the second part of the port, we have V2 and I2. So what is happening is that I1 is entering into a particular network and after coming out, I1 will itself come out. Similarly, when I2 enters into a particular network, I2 itself comes out from the network. So this is basically a two port network in which we have a network at the middle. Then we have V1 voltage, I1 and V2 voltage, I2 at port 1 and 2 respectively. And we have two important functions, that is the driving point function and the transfer function. I hope I am very clear with this. So what is a port? A port is a pair of terminal brought out for connections externally for energy sources. Each port must have two terminals for current to flow in and flow out. So that is what is very important to do. Just give you a gist about it. As I told you, we have a network. In this particular box, it can have two ports V1, I1 will the voltage and current. At port 2, we have V2 and I2. And there are two important terminologies we'll be talking now in detail that is the driving point function and the transfer function. Very important. Okay. So, talking first about the driving point function. If the excitation and the response are measured at the same port, the network function is known as the driving point function. So what does it mean is that when I have the different parameters like the impedance, the admittance at the same port, I'm not taking one port here and one port here. In that case, I will be talking about the driving point function. We will be understanding it further with the equations also. So, here we have, you know, the Z of S, S is nothing else than the transfer, uh, the Laplace transform. So that is given as V of S upon I of S being the impedance and the driving point admittance is given as I of S upon V of S. So here we have the driving point function that is Z11 of S, Z22 of S, Y11 of S and Y22 of S. What happens of Z11 of S? It is given as v1 of s upon i1 of s z22 of s is given a v2 of s upon i2 of s and now i guess you can correlate when i talk about a driving point function 
the response is measured at the same port. Hence, we have Z11 that is at the same port 1 and 1. It's not like 1 and 2. Similarly, Z22 it is at port 2 itself. Similarly, Y11 it is at port 1 itself and Y22 it is at port 2 itself. I hope I am very clear with this. Next, we have the transfer function. So, as we learned in case of the driving point function, the response and the excitation is measured at the same port only. But here, we have at least two ports which are involved in this. So, it relates the voltage or the current at one port to the voltage and current at the other port. So, I hope I am very clear. So, if you look at the equations over here, we have 1, 2, 2, 1. When you talked about a driving point function, we have only a single port, 1 and 1, 2 and 2. But in case of a voltage transfer function, current transfer function, impedance transfer function and admittance transfer function, always remember that we will be talking at least of two different ports, not at the same port. So we have V12 of S given as V2 of S upon V1 of S. The V2 of 1 of S given as V1 upon V2. So, it's output upon input. So, output is the second part and input is the first part. Hence, V1 of S upon V2 of S. Similarly, we have the current transfer function. The current transfer function is given as I12 of S is given as I2 of S upon I1 of S. Wherein my I2 of S is basically my output. The current at the port 2 upon I1 of S that is current at port 1. Because the transfer function is always given as output upon input. Similarly, we have I21 of S given as I1 of S upon I2 of S. Similarly, we have the impedance. As you spoke in case of your two port network, we have impedance of at a single port only, 1, 1, 2, 2. It's either at port 1, it's either at port 2. But in case of my transfer function, we have impedance at in the combination of two ports, that is, V2 of S upon I1 of S. Voltage at the second port, current at the first port. Similarly, Z21 of S is given as V1 of S upon I2 of S. Admittance transfer function is given as I2 of S upon V1 of S. And admittance given as Y21 of S is given as I1 of S upon V2 of S. I hope I am very clear with this. Next. Next, the Laplace transform of network elements. Now, what is the Laplace transform network element given as? Uh, this is very important because when we have to find out the driving point function or the transfer function, you do always in the form of Laplace transform, right? So, you need to know because if you have seen over here, made with the driving point function in which the values are always taken at a single port only or made with the transfer function in which the values are taken at two different ports. It is always in case and always in the way of Laplace transform, right? So similarly, we have Laplace transform of these elements. R and R is given as R only. L is given as S of L. And C is given as 1 upon S of C. So the driving point impedance has to be found out. So driving point impedance is what? The impedance at the same port. So we have to find out here Z of S. That is the Laplace transform impedance of this particular network. So what I had told you, you to first convert this particular network element into its Laplace values. It is a resistor. A resistor is always given as R itself. So we have one given as one only. But an inductor is given as, if it is L, it is given as S into L. Hence I have 2 into S. So, the total impedance is given as 1 plus 2s because they are in series. I hope I am very clear to you. The next question, if you see, again is asking you to find out this impedance value. And already here, the values are given in Laplace transform. So, it's nothing else than normal series parallel. 1s parallel with 1 plus 2. If you solve this particular thing, you will get s plus 1 upon 3s plus 2. So, this was basically the driving point function kind of thing wherein we were only measuring the impedance or any other parameter only at a single port. But now, we will try to take up a particular numerical in which we are solving the transfer function. 
in which there will be both the pores which are going to be involved. So here we have this question. Find the voltage transfer function V12 of S for the below circuit. So V12 of S. So if you look at this particular question, it is asking to find out V12 of S. That means first you should break it down. What does the expression mean? It means V2 of S that is the voltage at port 2 upon V1 of S. That is the voltage at port 1. Okay, now this is an example of transfer function and not a driving point function because here there are both the ports involved. In the previous numericals, there was only one port. It was only from one port. It was not from both the ports. But in this question, we are going to solve it from both the ports point of view. So if you look at this particular question, we have V2 of S upon V1 of S. So first apply the uh, KVL equation for V2 of S. So the V2 of S, which is straight away this particular voltage across the capacitor, is nothing else than I1 of S upon 1 upon SC. There is no I2 of S. The I2 of S is not there because this particular part of my loop is open. Hence, there is no I2 of S. Hence, simply I have V1 of S. Hence, the V2 of S is given as I, I1 of S because the current will be flowing here only since this path is open. And I have into 1 by SC. I hope I am very clear to you. Hence, I have got the value of my V2 of S. To find out the value of my V1 of S, again you have to find out KVL in this particular loop. That is V1 of S minus of I1 of S into R minus of I1 of S into 1 by SC. So you will get V1 of S. You will just do V2 of S upon V1 of S. Just do the division and the I1 of S is common over here. It will get cancelled off and this will be my final equation. The notes are present in the description box so you can refer that thing for detailed explanation but still. So I hope I am very clear. I wanted to give you an idea on how to solve a particular question when it is a dri uh, driving point function that is only at a single port and when it is a transfer function wherein both the ports are involved. First of all in case of your transfer function break the particular given transfer function into a numerator and denominator format. Then try to find out V2 of S, which is nothing else than the voltage across the capacitor, which is one I, I1 of S upon 1 by SC. And the V1 of S is nothing else than the voltage in this particular loop. That is the voltage drop across R plus the voltage drop across C. And try to find out V2 of S upon V1 of S. This is my value of my transfer function. I hope I am very clear to you. Hence, after this, I have solved this particular numerical. It's a little complex numerical. Please go through it. Okay. Uh, I have explained all these steps. These steps are present in the notes in the description box. Please go through it. If you have any doubt in this particular numerical, please comment in the comment section. I will try to take a separate video on this particular numerical itself. This numerical is nothing else than to find out if you see the driving point function and next we have the transfer function. So it's a combination of both the things. So you can apply those same principles which I have uh, explained earlier in the other numericals over here also. Once you understand those particular concepts, you can apply the concept over here and solve this particular question. It will have certain application of nodal analysis also. If you haven't watched the video of nodal analysis, it is there in the description, sorry, in the network playlist of my YouTube channel. Please go and watch it out. It's one of the most important methods. So this particular question is completely solved. Please go through it. And if you haven't understood it, then please come in the comment section. I'll try to bring out a new video only explaining this particular numerical because this numerical will be a little lengthy to explain. Hence, I'm not explaining to you over here, but it's completely solved in my particular PDF note. Please download it from there. And uh, I'll just give you a gist of the entire topic again. As I told you, it's a very important topic for you to learn the two-port network in detail properly. So you should know what does a two-port network represent and what is a driving point function and what is a transfer function. 
So a driving point function is always at the same port, whereas the transfer function is at two different ports. Then it is R is given as R, L is given as SL, and C is given as 1 upon SC. If you look at this particular numerical, it is only asked from one port, hence it's a driving point function. This is also a driving point function. And when you have a voltage transfer function, that is, the voltage or any other parameter is been asked across two ports, the output upon input, the second number indicates the output, the first number indicates the input. So just try to get that equation, try to find out the equation and you will get the answer. Then in this particular numerical as I mentioned, there are both the driving point function and transfer function both are mentioned. I have solved it completely. It includes the concepts from the earlier topics as well as from nodal analysis. So please do go through it. And if you like the video, please do not forget to like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram and share it to as many people as possible so that everyone get benefited out of it. The next video will be starting with the two port network in detail. For that, this video topics were very important. So please, do, so please go through it. The next video will be live very soon. Thank you so much. God bless you.